Good day, everyone. Welcome to the GTC Traders Weekly Note. You don't need the date. The date's like probably plastered all over this entry. It's plastered over the article that accompanies this entry. It's plastered on the YouTube video. You don't need the date. Okay, it's November the 13th, 2023. The Weekly Note is something we release each week here at GTC. Uh, traders, it's a look ahead at the calendar, the markets for the week. What I do is I pull this from a private proprietary firm that I am the senior partner of. We put together, you know, the weekly note for that firm. And then we just sort of just copy and paste it, <laughs> copy and release it here as well. So if you want to find the specifics of the note, if you go to the article that accompanies this entry. So in other words, the link in the description on this video, you go to the description of the video, there will be a link, the article that accompanies this entry. You click on that. It's going to take you to all the specifics, you know. Are we bullish? Are we bearish? Are we neutral? Emerging markets, various parts of the treasury curve. What do we think of stirs? What's sort of popping off to us there? You know, what's happening in commodities as a whole. So if you want to find that, you go to the link in the description. It's literally copy and pasted from the weekly note that we put up at the private proprietary firm. If you are new to something like a weekly note or a daily note, we are by no means the only firm to do something like this, to do a weekly note or to do a daily note. If you go to if you go to GTC Traders YouTube channel, you're going to find a playlist or series of videos of, oh, wow, gee, fancy that, the weekly note, right? <laughs> sort of obvious. Thank you, Captain Obvious. But if you go to that GTC Traders YouTube channel, you go to the playlist for the weekly note, and like that first and second and third entries, maybe even the fourth entry, there's a lot of explanations there, and it gives you a basic rundown of why we do this in a weekly note. Okay, why we're not the only ones. Like, we're not special, right? It's like, ooh, wow, look at us. We got a weekly note. No, we're not special. Many, 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 many firms do this. And why do many firms do this that are professional firms that are profitable, that are making money, right? We list them in those entries. So you may want to check that out if you're new. And then in these entries, we do what I do best. I blather on about my thoughts, not yours, right? But so it's a look over our shoulder as to what we're thinking. And we like to produce it because interaction's key, keeps you sharp. This week, I want to talk about period periodicity and as I have been talking for like the last several weeks, not getting the wrong idea if you're a newer self-directed retail trader, okay? So, I often say that the periodicity that we operate under, you know, we're not, you know, a $2 billion firm, so we can, we can move quickly, and therefore we, by the way, if you're new, you may not realize that, okay? Um, and you only realize this when you start really looking at how to manage funds at size. It's a scalability function, right? It's, it's, it's how, how scalable are you? Um, what are we trying to say here? I'm trying to explain this for, I'm trying to, I know what I'm talking about, right? But I'm, a lot of newer retail traders, you guys are not exposed to this stuff. If you've got a $15 billion firm, you can't operate in a zero to 15 day periodicity. I mean, maybe if you're an HFT firm, right? Obviously you're, you're dealing in nanoseconds there, but I'm talking about positions that last days. I know a guy that was basically, uh, he worked at a really large firm, right? You just get to know people over the decades. And he said, uh, and it was a very, very well-known firm and they held positions for a long time a lot of AUM, I'll just put it that way. Uh, and he said to put on a position and to take off a position took them about two weeks to sometimes, if they were really building the position, up to three months. Think about that, right? So I'm just saying that to say since we're not a, you know, $15 billion firm, <laughs> we can afford to play in smaller periodicities like zero to 15 days. So that being said, we sort of base these on a zero to 15 day periodicity, okay? And to sort of get an eye, and I say zero to 15 day periodicity because zero days was what? It's today. Like, what am I thinking today? I'm neutral on equities. 
and I and I look at just basically price action. I'll just go ahead and tell you. I'm just looking at price action. And okay, when I look at price action, it goes this goes back to almost the beginning of the year on this particular chart of spoos. Today, what what do I think of price action? I think I think you need a neutral stance. Popped up a little bit, spilled a little bit higher, right? But often you'll get spills like that that spill just like like what was that back right at the beginning of August when we were up north of 4550, right? We made a new high, spilled a little bit higher before starting that larger downtrend that lasted clear to the end of last month, right? So you'll get a little spill higher, but I've basically been neutral on equities. So that's a little bit talk of periodicity, right? I look at something like this that goes back to nearly the beginning of the year, and I think today, price action, just price action, we got a little bit of a spill higher. What's my stance? I'm neutral, okay? That's the first thing. We're operating in a zero to 15 day periodicity. Um, it's bias, not bets, as we said in those first three or four entries in the weekly note. But here's, here's the last point I want to make. If you see us with a neutral stance, I fear that newer self-directed retail traders will hear neutral stance in a zero to 15 day periodicity on something like the spoos here. I think, well, there's nothing to do, right? There's nothing to do. Uh, au contraire, mon frere. <laughs> when I say there's nothing to do, it's like you just got to wait. As a matter of fact, like last week, uh, there is an ex-CME local, um, trades the screen now. Actually, he's involved in quite a few things. And he mentioned this last week. He says probably to inflation, which is, you know, until the inflation numbers are released, we're going to have quiet markets, which we have. We're, we're neutral in a lot of markets when you look over our weekly note in the article that accompanies this entry. It's like probably till inflation numbers, there's not going to be going, a lot going on. I agreed with him. There's not going to be a lot going on. We're neutral on a zero to 15 day period. And there hasn't been going all, a lot going on. One spill higher. That's it. Um, it's sort of funny. Just side tangent. You know, because I'm Dan and that's what I do. Like, like again, you look back, you know, what was that, July, when we were north of 4550, we had that spill higher. All this week, because we had that spill higher this week, I keep on hearing, up. Oh, that's it. The, 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 you know, we cleared that 4375 structure, so we're heading higher. And it's like, really? I mean, we may, we may not, right? Predictions for fools. That's just my opinion. But it's like, guys, never heard of a spill? never heard of a stop run right that's my name for it by the way it's not like an industry name for it it's just my name for it i've got friends they have different names for them i've always called it when it just spills a little higher lower than a particular price right it's like you guys never heard of a stop run seriously you just you just think that is the end all be all prediction of who knows we might but uh we're still neutral we're maintaining our neutral stance anyways that's a side tangent but Getting back to the main point, what we were discussing is don't think with a neutral stance, there's like, well, there's not a lot to do or there's no way to make money. Au contraire, mon frere. I love selling options. There's a, I, I've got a whole speech behind that. I, I actually had a first take of this video entry and I had to stop it because I went into like a 20 minute diatribe against buying options and selling options and the quantitative research behind, you know, being an options seller. So I'm going to spare you of that. This whole video entry is take two. But let's just say I'm an option seller, right? We love neutral markets. Oh my God, that's like our bread and butter if we're selling uh, options. Sell these lottery tickets to guys that think they can time not only the delta correctly, they think they can time the gamma because if you're buying in a, like in a market that's going sideways, you have to get not just the timing correct. You have to be in the right time window and you have to get the volatility correct and you have to get the change in the delta correct i mean your timing on so many things has to be perfect your delta can be good and you can still lose money buying the option you know so see there i go again i'm going down this whole thing but my point being if you're newer and you hear us say right because you've heard me say it's bias not bets well, if we have a neutral bias, don't think there's no way to make money. If, oh, we're just neutral on the S&P 500, not a lot going on. There's no way to make money. There's a lot of great ways to make money, right? It's selling premiums, sell ratio spreads. Those, those suckers are so freaking highly, you know, you're working with an inverse risk profile if you work with ratio spreads. 
But my God, beautiful money, right? And money is to be made, is my point. So again, we debated releasing you know, our weekly note from the private prop firm here because we are afraid, and you can tell this from like the last 10 entries or however many I've done of these, that I'm afraid people are getting the wrong idea from them. And that's something I wanted to say this week. Because we're neutral in a few markets, don't think there's no, like, wow, there's no way to make money. There's nothing going on. You just got to sit on your hands. I don't know. Maybe that that's viable. You know, if, if that's what your program sort of mandates, and that is your mandate. But pff, there's there's tons of ways to make money in markets that are going sideways. So we wanted to say that. That was just our thought for this week. The specifics of the weekly note are as we have said on the article that accompanies this entry. And of course, this has been what it's always been. Our thoughts are just our thoughts, and they are only good until they're canceled. And it has simply been our thoughts, not yours, for whatever that date is. As always, stay safe, trade well, and remember that love doesn't cost a dime.